Welcome back to our channel. Today we're sketching and painting a full moon. Do you have any updates for us? Uh, it's the most horrible thing that could happen. I have braces. <laughs> I think they look great. Your teeth are gonna be so nice and straight when you're done. I had to have braces too. It's all good. <laughs> but let's get back to watercolor. All right, for supplies for this tutorial, you're going to need watercolor paper. We're using Fluid 100 watercolor paper. This is a nice cold pressed paper. It's made out of cotton, so it's gonna handle our wet washes really well. And it's important not to tape it down today because we're actually gonna be flipping our paper around like this to help us get a better grip on the edge of the moon shape. And then you're gonna need a circle that you can trace. We're just gonna use this little candle cover. I thought it was just a, a really good size for our paper. So that's what we're gonna use. And you'll need a pencil, some paper towel, and a watercolor brush, and some paint. Now you only need to use one color for this. That's the best part. If you want to use more colors, that's totally up to you, but I think we're going to stick with one color for this one just to keep it really simple. And at the end, if you want to add some bright white stars, use a white gouache or a white gel pen, or we're going to be using, this is Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. It's just a white, totally opaque paint. We got our supplies, we're ready to go. Let's get All right. started. All right, so let me show you. You want to try to center your moon right in the middle of your paper. And so I'm looking at both sides and trying to make the them even. And then you're going to hold on to your circle, whatever it is you're using for your stencil, and carefully trace a circle shape around. All right. Okay. And press firmly so it doesn't slide around. You might have to look at it from the top just so you can see your edge. Good job. How's it look? Pretty Flawless. good. Flawless. <laughs> Beautiful circle. Okay, so the next thing is to paint the moon. I have a reference photo and I'll make sure that this is showing on your screen at home so you can see it too. But look at this beautiful moon. It has all of these craters. It has some light spots and some dark spots. We're going to try to copy that using the wet and wet technique. The wet and wet technique is simply when you take clean water and you paint it on your surface. Let's go ahead and take our clean water and paint it into the moon. And it's okay if you're a little sloppy and your water goes beyond the moon. That's all right. So wet on wet is when you take wet paint and paint it onto an already wet paper. You want to have kind of a glistening surface, no puddles. So look at it sideways. If you see some pooling, make sure you're pushing your water around so that it's nice and even. And look at it from all directions so that you know the entire circle is wet. I see a couple little dry areas. So maybe even a little more water. We want it to stay wet long enough so that we can drop in some color for those craters on the moon. So once that's ready, we're gonna take our dark color. This is a Payne's Gray, it's called. And it's helpful to swirl it a little bit onto a palette over on the side here so you can see how thick your paint is or how dark. You don't want it to be black, right? Because that would look a little too dark. The moon needs to be lighter than the dark sky around it. So come up with sort of a creamy mix of color, something like that and go ahead and grab some paint and we're gonna drop it into our moon. And if it's exploding too much on the wet paper, that's creating a lot of fuzz, isn't it? Just draw your brush on your paper towel for a moment, like this, just blotting it on your paper towel, and then come back into your painting. And if you don't have enough paint, just grab more from your palette. It's a little bit of kind of testing it out and seeing how dark your paint is and how fast the paint is flowing and it's okay if the paint goes beyond your moon because we're gonna be painting that a whole lot darker with our sky color. So that's all right. I'm just using a little bit of a blotting motion, looking at my photo of the moon and trying to follow along with where I see those little craters. Most of the dark shapes are on the left side of the moon, aren't they? They are. That looks good, Ansley. Nice. There's a couple dark ones on the right side here too. There's a little circle here on the right even. It almost looks like a, another moon inside of the moon. And if you want even lighter colors, just dip your brush in the water, blot on your paper towel, and see how there's still some paint in there? You can use that lighter color to fill in your moon in areas where you want to go. A little darker than just the white of the paper. So you can do this in a couple layers, or you can do it all in one layer. It's totally up to you. I'm going to actually add some darker color even to my moon but you have to try to do this while your paper is still kind of that shiny, glistening wet. As soon as it starts to dry, put your brush down and leave it alone. Otherwise you'll end up getting a blotchy, kind of lifted paint surface and it's gonna look like you messed with it too much. So if it's starting to dry, put your brush down and stop working on it. 
I'm still working on a pretty wet surface, so I can get away with adding some other dark colors to my craters. And that's good. You're darkening your left side of your moon. Nice work. And remember that watercolor dries lighter. So it may look a little bit dark right now, but as it begins to dry, it will start to lighten up. So if you're sort of fearful of it maybe looking too dark, don't worry about it. Especially when we add our dark sky around it, it's going to look a lot lighter than it does now. It's kind of crazy how when you put a, a color like this on a white paper, it just looks so dark. But once we add the dark sky behind it, it's going to look like the lightest thing on the paper. All right, so how are you feeling about your moon so far? Pretty good? I think it looks good already. Yeah, there you go with a blotting motion. Don't press too hard or you might end up lift, lifting some paint. So you can actually lift paint up if you have a thirsty enough brush. Yeah. Is it too dark? No, it's not too dark. It looks good. All right, so let's go ahead and dry that. We need to make sure it's completely dry before we paint our sky. All right, so let's dry these. It looks good. All right. Now, if you want to tape the edges so that you have pretty borders, that's totally an option. I'm gonna keep mine untaped so that I can actually flip my paper around. The reason you're gonna to wanna to turn your paper is so that you can use the tip of your brush to paint around that pencil edge. Because it's hard to do this, isn't it? Yeah, But it it's is. a lot easier to do this. So if you're twisting your paper around, that'll make your life easier. Now the key here is gonna be to mix up enough of this dark paint that you can cover your whole surface. So I'm actually gonna squeeze some more out of the tube. So to make sure you have plenty of paint, it's okay to squeeze out some extra. And then it'll be ready and gooey. Gooey and ready to go. So you want really creamy paint. Creamy paint with some water mixed in so that it goes across the paper smoothly. But once you're ready, this is your turn to be brave. We have to color carefully around our pencil marks. So watch the tip of your brush and go slowly. Working your way around your moon. Mine isn't dark enough. Okay, we'll grab more paint. It's good to test that first. You sure did a little test mark there. Oops, I'm getting inside my moon. <laughs> oh, it's hard. It's hard to stay in the lines. I know. Same as for me. Mm -hmm. I can never cut a perfect circle out of cardboard. Neither on no. paper. Circles are kind of tricky. I know. But if you go slowly enough and just see where the tip of your brush is going, and that's what you're studying and making sure it's right along your pencil edge. It just looks really good. It's kind of amazing how much dark paint you need. Yours looks good too. When you're painting this dark, you use up a lot more paint. There. So once you've gotten all the way around your circle, you're still working on yours, but then you can just take more paint and extend your sky a little bit further. So I just painted some more dark color around my moon. You could take it all the way down to the bottom of your paper if you want, sort of like a rectangle shape. If your paint is not flowing very easily, just dip your brush in your water so that you can get the paint to just move really smoothly across the paper. <laughs> It's a lot of surface to cover. Oops, I got some on my table. It's fine. <laughs> like. All right, I'm gonna rinse this out and let me see if I can help you lift some of the paint back out of your moon. Do you wanna try it? Okay. All right, I'm if you make a little mistake, which honestly, that's not bad at all, but if it bothers you, take a clean but damp brush and carefully swipe <laughs> along the area where you wanna lift the paint back out. Hey, we got our moon back. Yeah. Right. So keep finishing your background. Your moon has lots of character. So does yours. It's all those fun shapes inside of it. Well then, we'll speed up the drawing process with our heat tool. Yay, looks great. Which way did the cow go to get to the moon? The Milky Way? <laughs> what is a vampire's favorite type of moon? A blood moon. <laughs> okay, it's time for our last thing. This is the stars in the sky, my oh. favorite part. Something we can do is use the spatter technique with a brush, or you can use a toothbrush, which is also really fun. It does make kind of a mess on your table, so you might wanna, you know, put down some paper towel or something so that you can protect your surface, although we already got blue on our table. All right, so once your surface is protected, 
and your moons are ready to go. You can take your white and you could use either a brush. Yeah, I'll show you both. So I'm gonna actually take that cap again and cover up my moon to protect it. Okay, so that my spatter goes all around. Maybe I should do this to mine. So when we get on the bottom, <laughs> yeah. white and white. All right, and then I'm just going to tap, 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 tap to get some stars. And it's okay if it goes over your cap. You can always rinse that off. All right, you wanna try? All right. All right, so protecting the moon and tapping. Awesome. And then the other method I want to show you, you already have a lot of stars. <laughs> yeah, but I want to do the toothbrush also. <laughs> Why not? Okay. Yes. So for the toothbrush method, load up your toothbrush if with you, more white paint. If you ever have a spare toothbrush, I guess you could use it mm -hmm. for watercolor. And then you just go like this. Ooh, I need to cover my moon though. Small mistake. This will get some of those really tiny galaxy stars in the background, right? Yeah. It does get paint on you, though. Yeah, it's a little messy. <laughs> but this is the best part. I mean, let's face it. This is just so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Milk fingers. Uh, all right. So once you're done with your stars, let it dry. Whoa. And there's our finished moons. Water. All right. We need to go wash our hands. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> there's our finished moons. Those look so cool. Nice work. I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can see more of our awesome videos. Bye, see you in the next video.